still waiting for that to come up, but we're going to go ahead and start worship. Um, I just want to remind you, tomorrow night, uh, we have our creed study again. Hopefully it won't be in the middle of a tornado warning. Uh, tomorrow night at 6.30. Um, we have next Sunday night, David, is fish fry. What time do we eat? Six. Six. Wasn't that what we said? Six o'clock to eat. And then Don's brother is going to share and his wife. They did a mission trip to Honduras. So they will share that afterwards. What do you need people to bring or do you need help or what, David? I've talked to some. I got You've got it all covered? Plus, the, you know, everybody needs to bring uh, covered dish. Covered dish. Everybody needs to bring a covered dish, but you've got the rest covered. I got the Only fish covered. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now also, uh, put something in too. Don't just bring a dish. Yeah, sure. You what? Put something in. Don't just bring a dish. Oh, you don't just bring a dish. You got to put food in it. Yeah. Man, I thought that's how you took leftovers home. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Uh, Lois also handed out these uh, order forms for Easter lilies or spring flowers. If you'd like uh, to do that, fill this out. And when do you need these by? A couple weeks. Yeah. Okay, so if you can get these done in a couple weeks, that would be great. And then we also will share um, the list of who we did this in memory of that day as well, too. So if you'd like to do it in memory of, do it. If not, that's fine. You can just uh, get some flowers, too. Any other announcements? No. Okay, then let us begin our worship.
to page 844. We will share or join in our responsive reading at 844. <clears throat> I think sometimes computers just go on strike, and ours is on strike right now. So, again, it's page 844, Psalm 121. Let us join responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes to the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, the Lord who keeps you to Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Give me a 
thousand dollars. Did he? Well, no, but he didn't say that. He said, he said, here's Jesus. Period. I give you Jesus. Period. took Cindy down to see her doctor last Monday. She had one of her blackout spells and she's been in the hospital ever since. Uh, they think the problem is because of all the medication she's on and they're trying to get all of her medication regulated so okay. that she can come home. Cindy is down in the hospital, their daughter-in-law Cindy, and they're trying to get medications and all that figured out so she can get back home. So, okay. Any others? Marilyn got good news the other day. Marilyn. Marilyn got good news? Yeah, it started her heart. Is your heart going right now? And how's it feel? Does it feel good? Actually, I don't really. Well, I am glad you're in rhythm. <laughs> so now you can dance. One shock and did it. One shock and did it. Awesome. I'm glad it took care of itself. Thank you. Any others? Does anyone know anything about uh, Allison and Lori Schweitzer who was already got hurt? Is that the one in the farming accident? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, the only thing we heard at Albany today was that he was still in the hospital at Children's, but I don't know. The paper said he was getting credit on the condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard. I haven't heard that they thought he would be fine. Oh, oh my God. God. I heard that good. Piece, Chris had a piece on Facebook that he was doing better. Okay. Any others? Okay, then let us uh, join. Actually, we're going to join in our prayer hymn, and uh, then we're going to sing Amazing Grace, Our Chains Are Gone, and you'll recognize it if you don't know it by the title, and we'll just let them lead us, and if you want to join in, join in, and if you don't, just uh, remain in that prayerful attitude and listen. So...
you for this day that we awoke and came and worshipped you. We thank you that we have this place that we can worship together and we can laugh together and we can cry together. We can share joys, we can share concerns, we can share life as the body of Christ. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, we do have concerns on our hearts and some we share and some we keep silent. We do celebrate positive health news out of Carol's brother and, and that Cindy can get on the right foot. We thank you for Marilyn that we could get her heart going back in rhythm. We thank you, Lord, for all those things this week that, that people who were sick are now on the mend. For those who are still sick with the, the flus or whatever problems they might be having, we lift them to you, that they may feel your extra touch of of care and health among them. Lord, we pray for the young man that was hurt in the farming accident, that they too can, can do whatever needs to be done so he can return back home and, and be the kid that you made him to be. Lord, we thank you for all the ways in which you help us. You help us in sadness and in joy. Help us to always find the silver lining in anything that happens because we remember that you have amazing grace and that you gave, that you love, period. Nothing else behind, nothing else before, but you gave. And for that, we give you thanks. Lord, we ask that you be with those towns that were affected by tornadoes in the last week. We ask that you be with those people who are affected by the wildfires and the, a little bit further west than here. And for all the others who are, are struggling with, with natural things, anybody that's struggling with their health, anyone that's struggling just with relationship, whether it's with each other or with you, we lift them to you. Thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ. Hear us now as we join together in the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God, we ask your blessings on these gifts and the hands that gave them. Be with us, Lord, as we journey to the cross, that we don't forget to give. To give of our time and our talents, our gifts, our service, and our faith. Be with this church as we use these gifts to make a difference and to show people your love. In your son's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament lesson, or, yeah, it is Old Testament lesson, sorry. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Genesis, and this is Genesis chapter 12. And it really is just reminding us of the beginning of the story of Abraham, uh, which at this time his name was Abram. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. And now if you would please stand and join in my scripture lesson. The gospel lesson this morning contains one of the most famous verses in scripture. Uh, I'm going to share the story of the For God So Loved the World this morning. This is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asks. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but you still, but you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of God. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so must the Son of God be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You may be seated. I want to talk this morning about this guy, Nicodemus. Who is Nicodemus? And what is this meaning? between Nicodemus and Jesus all about? Well, actually, it's the gospel of Jesus. This discourse between Nicodemus and Jesus comes up just about every year during Lent, and it comes for an obvious reason. This Lenten season is set aside for us to meditate on the, the areas of our lives that keep us separated from God and one another. And this story, this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus, is about an obstacle in Nicodemus' life, as well as it can be in ours. So what time does this story take place? It is important here, and it is the first bit of foreshadowing in this story. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. 
Now, was that by accident? I don't think so. Nicodemus was being secretive, or, or not really sneaky, but he was trying to be secretive. He didn't want to be detected by, by other people. He doesn't want to be seen. It's a top secret mission for Nicodemus. And who is he hiding from? Well, I think he's hiding from everybody. Nicodemus is a Pharisee. The religious elite who ended up in the end seeing that it was Jesus who was killed, but he was one of the Pharisees. And not just that, but it says he was one of the rulers of the Pharisees. He was a big time Pharisee. And here he is sneaking around at night looking for answers. It's ironically the honest that he's looking at night because he really is in the dark anyway. Religion and, and rationalization and good principles weren't enough to stand up in the darkness in Nicodemus' life. So he comes to Jesus. He says, I don't get it. What is going on? No one can do what you do apart from God. Now that must have been hard for him to say, but that's what he says. He obviously has heard the word of God proclaimed. He obviously has seen someone healed or the lame walk or the blind see. He, he has seen one of the miracles of Jesus, and yet he's still in the dark. Sometimes we are the same way. We can see and feel and hear all the reasons why Jesus should be in our hearts, and sometimes we too are still in the dark. But Jesus tells him it's from God. For no one has gone to heaven except the one who comes from heaven, the Son of Man. Jesus has just said that he is special. He came from heaven. And then he goes on to describe this coming crucifixion for the sins of the world. He sees that, that he is more than just a model citizen. I think he's trying to tell Nicodemus, yeah, you might think I'm a great teacher, yes, I'm a moral man, but I'm more than that. God sent me from heaven for this moment. So then, later in the scripture, he goes on to take away any misgivings, and he said, let me tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Now, of course, Nicodemus takes that literally and goes, what? No man can enter into his mother's womb and be born again. And Jesus said, okay, let me try again. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. The spirit gives birth to spirit. You shouldn't be surprised at me saying you must be born again. But one of the things I want to share with you about that statement, born again is one of those statements that has been used and abused by many Christians. Sometimes when you talk about being born again, it, it completely turns people off and they don't understand what it means. Sometimes people in religion have used it kind of as a, a whipping post that you have to be born again, you have to be born again, when you really don't even understand what that word means. We have that in Nicodemus. He is the teacher, and yet he is still clueless. He's in good company because many people are too. But I want to share with you what the New Revised Standard Version translation says in this statement. The NRSV says, um, you must be born from above. There's a distinction there. First, as I said, born again has been claimed by many sorts of people, and, and many people will say they've been beaten up by that terminology. Therefore, as you and I try to understand what Jesus is saying, maybe we should say we should all be born from above. Born from above makes the distinction about what is happening. To be born from above is to be given a new perspective in your life, a new mindset, a new vision of life from God's viewpoint. It's that part of your life that you, you know is missing. There's just something not there, and you can't quite put your finger on it. 
Many people in our world try and fill that space with many things, with drug and alcohol or, or spending or whatever addiction you might have. And even religion on its own does not fill that space. It is a God-sized space and shape for God for a reason. Nicodemus knew there was something more because he went in the dark to talk to Jesus. But he didn't know what it was. And here Jesus tells him what it is. That he must be born from above. So he kind of says, well, I still don't get it. And Jesus reminds us of Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Moses lifted the serpent up to, for a moment of healing for the people of Israel, that God could do all things because he held up a, a serpent and it turned into a staff. We can all be lifted up. We can all be forgiven. We can all receive God's grace. We are atoned for finally with Jesus. And then he gives us in verse 15 that whoever believes may have eternal life. We come to God by faith. That space, that, that emptiness in our heart is filled when we are born from above with Christ. We step out of the dark at that moment and into the light as we take God into our hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is the gospel. That is what it's all about. God loves, God gave. That's it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. His son did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. That is the, the born again, the born from above that we all need to accept. God loved and God gave. And when we accept those things into our hearts, we use us this Lenten season. Amen. Let us join in our traditional Apostles' Creed, number 881. Please stand. <coughs>
for our benediction. <clears throat> Almighty and gracious God, as we leave this place, help us remember four words. God loves and God gives. Be with us as we journey to the cross. Amen. Amen. Let us join and go now in peace.